Greetings, folks. Welcome to another Train Sim World 4 video. Today, we've got the DBBR, or DB Class, as it's known, 218 Loco add-on. Now, this is from developer TSG, who has been making stuff for Train Sim Classic for quite a while, uh, and now Train Sim World 4 as well, a couple of products, and they are generally top shelf so do not be confused this was not made by dovetail games they may have offered some support uh and they of course published it hence publisher here but it's uh it's made by mike uh and i think another person tsg so this is now available i think it was uh it's about 18 bucks us not sure what it's going to come out to be in your localization but being that I love the German stuff within Train Sim World 4, and it's really the only thing that kind of keeps me playing Train Sim World 4 since, well, the North American stuff is generally kind of crummy, uh, I'm going to bite. And I did. I took a big old chunk and bite. So let's go ahead and take a look at this thing and see what it has to offer. Now, what you can do with this thing that is important right because of the way train sim world is laid out in the way it is made sadly they decided to use Hauptstrick hamburg lubeck for the kind of primary route for the db 218. now the very crap thing about that is they did not update the time of day and or skybox or weather uh, for the route, so it's still going to have the very old crappy looking overall lighting and skybox and whatnot But I believe it adds scenarios to it as well as layering it in To the timetable. So let's see that is a 218 there. I think there's four scenarios. That is uh, a well that one as well Okay, so there's three one of it might be like cab car leading or something like that who knows but that is the main gist of it we'll take a peek at uh the timetable so if you want to click on the 218 there it is we'll click that here's all the timing of course this being a double duty locomotive uh it handles it all so it handles freight and passenger uh trains as well but that is everything for hamburg lubeck so let's go ahead and back up it is going to add stuff for Mainteilbahn, which is one of my I know people are going to cringe. It's one of my favorite German routes in Train Sim World. Yes, it's a single line, commuter line, but I kind of like it. I mean, it's a, it's almost like uh, West Somerset, but not heritage and not English or British. So let's see what it added to that. Uh, now, of course, you're going to need Mintelbahn to be able to use this locomotive, but it looks like there's two timetables now. As you can see, the one on the left has a 218 in it. The one on the right does not. So let's click on that. Uh, click on the 218, yes, and it's got some timetablage as well. So the other issue is uh, Hamburg-Lubeck is an older route. It was from Train Sim World 3. I believe this route, Meintelbahn, was Train Sim World 4, although it was built off of Aschaffenburg, which was Train Sim World 1, I think. But it is a bit more updated. It looks a bit nicer overall, and it's got the updated uh, lighting. And whatnot. So I think I'll be using this as far as the testing, just to get a, a better sense of it and whatnot. Plus, I like the route. I think Hamburg Lubeck mm -hmm. is kind of a one-trick pony. Kind of sucks. A lot of it's just long, straight track, flat, just kind of boring, uh, in my mm -hmm. very crummy opinion. So we will hop in and take a look. Ooh, listen to that thing! Hot tour. Very nice. The BR218 in all its glory. And just listen to this thing idle. Hot damn. It sounds pretty spicy. So it's a four axle diesel hydraulic locomotive used by DB, of course, for passenger and freight. They were built by and between Krupp, Henschel, uh, and Krauss Muffy. They were built late 60s as far as the prototypes and then full on production from the early 70s uh, through the end of the 70s and are still used uh, on occasion to this very day. Now, about 400 plus were built of the 218s, uh, primarily used in West Germany. They offered power up to 2,800 horsepower and speeds of 140 kilometers per hour. 
Now, one of the interesting things about diesel hydraulics in this locomotive in particular is they have various gears for service types. So there are one and two gears. Gear two is essentially for light trains, uh, singular light engine movements, uh, likely passenger trains such as this. Uh, and then a gear one is set for your heavier freight uh, train or consist. Now they've also got hydrodynamic brakes, which they're brakes. Um, think of them almost like dynamic or rheostatic or in the same kind of ballpark or league save for they are not very powerful. They are meant just to kind of keep the speed of the train itself. Now, these things are pretty neat. They were built with multiple, uh, not only variations from the get-go, uh, many paint jobs. This is the standard DB Traffic Red, I think it's called. Uh, but they had different power units as well, uh, or prime movers. Uh, primarily, MTU built the TB-10, which they turned into the TB-11 for this unit. Uh, a few had Caterpillars, uh, peel sticks, the French peel stick as well. And um, yeah, they're just very neat locomotives. And they're diesel, which is very cool. So they just, I don't know, they just look chonk. I've always been drawn to this locomotive, especially from the days of Trains of Classic. And when uh, Mike and his company for Trains and Plastic built these for that game, um, you know, now they, they're a bit aged, but then they were pretty damn cool. So I'm hoping this thing is about the same. So let's get in and try and figure this thing out. So the bulk of your services with the DVB-R218 playing on Hamburg-Lubeck, which we're currently looking at here, are the N-Wagon and Karlsruhe Kopf cab car, which obviously drives the train from the other end back the other direction. So a uh, bulk of these services are going to be, just as you see here, going to Lubeck. And then uh, if you're coming back the other way from Lubeck to Hamburg, you're going to be in the cab car with this thing pushing at the back. So this is a majority of your services here. They did uh, say, and by they, I mean Dovetail Games 4, uh, TSG, I think, reworked some of the in-wagon cab car uh, to be able to run with this thing. But this is what you would run from the other end of it. Uh, one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is the coloring just is not quite the same on the reds um, especially over here in a bit better light it just looks way 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 different could be the lighting overall on Hamburg Lubeck since they did not add the uh, the new time of day you can see it's still got that really old ass time of day I don't know why they didn't add it I know it's a lot of other thing that goes into lighting the route as a whole but I feel like that's something they should have done especially putting this beautiful hunk of diesel hydraulic locomotive uh, in the game on this route it just makes zero sense at all but that's uh, that's a bulk of your services right there we'll take a look at the next one and so more services on offer to run the uh, DBBR 218 are these multiple unit working uh, set up freight trains this is currently in uh, Hamburg Lubeck as well um, which you'll just get a variety of different types of freight uh, it's cool that you got the multiple unit working, but I believe a bulk of your freight, sadly, is going to be on hamburg Lubeck. Again, the route decision, I do not understand. It's like, <laughs> why have such a great add-on and then put it on a, a, one of the worst German routes probably made, especially with you know this skybox. I don't get it dovetail, gonna dovetail as they do per use. But uh, this is another option you'll get. Does have a vibe in here though. It feels a bit old. It's uh, just worn, very nice looking. Can work your blinds. The sounds are not very good either. Uh, as far as the visors, it just seems like an oversight or I don't know, an easy way out. Kind of like the handbrake, just the repetitive sounds. That's just weird, man. That is really weird. Here's your phone to contact Signaler. Uh, let's open this window, which is different. It's kind of your little uh, vent window there. Which is kind of neat. You've got the standard sliding window. Which works as well. It's 
the CIFA release, brake stand. Let's go ahead and put the chair back down. Let's see what's down here. Nothing. Goes over here. Nothing. Does any of that work? Nope. Any of that? Nope. Desk like position. You can move that forwards and backwards. Okay. Kind of pointless, but I guess whatever. Uh. All right, train heating. So we're gonna set this um, to on. I believe you have to hold it for a second or two, unless it's already set up and running, which it is now. Uh, I don't know when you're gonna be able to operate this thing cold and dark, but it would be cool. Let's go ahead and pop a squat. Throw our reverser in. Set it to neutral. All right, so we gotta pick these passengers up. They've been sitting there for ages. Alright, engine group 1 and engine group 2 are both on. When you start the locomotive, you're going to hold down the start for several seconds and they'll fire up. We're going to go ahead and turn our brake key on, like a lot of the old German locomotives within the game. Uh, so we've got that on and in. Let's check this. That's PCB SIFA. There's the horn. Wiper. Sand. Let's actually do this. Here we go. Transmission power. We'll set that to on. Air compressor is on. Train lights, set that on. Get our signal lights to white. Signal top on. And instrument lights on. The lighting is still kind of dark in the game overall. It's very strange. Some interior lights just suck. I don't know if it's Unreal Engine or what, or this or this version of Unreal Engine. I feel like they didn't always look this bad. Uh, but I think we're almost ready to go. So let's throw this thing in forward. Which uh, we should have had some lights fire up there, if I'm not mistaken. So for your doors, when you're running passenger, we're going to hit this uh, knob here. That I didn't do that. It did that on its own. <laughs> We're gonna go uh, unlock left side, and then your unlock button is here. So doors open. So you can see the doors on the dust test cars are opening. Alright, let's set our direct brake. I feel like I'm missing something. Now, I don't know where the battery switch is. I went through the training manual, or the tutorial, sorry, because there is no manual, naturally. And uh, I don't know where it is. It might just be a key that you gotta press, which is kinda lame, uh, nor the PCB controls. So I looked all over this cab on where to turn that stuff on, and I could not find it anywhere. Again, that would typically be, uh, be back in the hallway or the engine room, but I'm assuming it's, um, you know, something you got to do with a shortcut key, which kind of sucks, if I'm honest. Alright, let's go ahead and lock the doors. So you can go ahead and put that back to lock all. And then close them up. And they are now shutting. Check our headlights. They look pretty good. They got a just very dim color to them. They're not that crazy bright white unnatural color. All right, so we're forwards. Let's release the brakes and the locomotive brake. Now, well, the way this thing works is you got to get the hydraulic kind of gear system lubricated. So you never want to just jam it into all of the throttles. You want to hit one or two and leave it for a couple seconds. And then after several seconds, then you can slowly proceed. So it's sort of like a tap changer, basically is, but diesel hydraulic. Let's test the horn out. Sound is nice. It does have a, a notable loop, but again, a lot of German trains, you know, they're not going to be holding the damn horn down the whole time, so... It is what it is. I feel like it is definitely better than the Transom Classic variant. Okay, I think that was some of the, the cab physics there. <laughs> that didn't seem very uh, believable.
very odd. All right, so how do we turn on, I can't ever remember the keybinds to turn stuff on manually. And this thing is strong, man, just two notches. And we're sliding and gliding, we're getting there quick. Uh, we got up to 45 kmh immediately, let's listen to this. Got some nice flange sound. All right, we're not stopping up here. Our next station is Kleinebeck. Uh, I guess the EVULA screen thing does not work. Yep, yeah, can't even turn it on. That's our train heating that is already on. Our uh, GSMR radio over here, auto set destination. I believe that goes to whatever coaches you're pulling. Yeah, so that doesn't actually light up either. Let's check this out. Yeah, nothing up there works either as well. So let's uh, let's stop. I'm gonna try and get the um, the PCB and all that turned on. I can't ever remember. Uh, the key binds. Let me find that real quick. All right, so it is control enter. We have currently got it turned on. It's showing the 85 board there. Let's go ahead and get this thing moving again. I had to use quite a bit of braking force uh, to get the thing stopped. So that was interesting. We'll throw one notch on it, or one power selection. Throw it in two. All right, not safe to release speed limit 45 kmh. I believe it's because this little tiny uh, station up here has got kind of a little sidetrack. I will acknowledge it. I do see the lights blinking, so it appears to be working somewhat, which is nice. Let's not try and test it quite yet. Anyway, I want to open this thing up. This may not be the best route to do so. But uh, if need be, we will turn off PCB and crack this puppy open. All right, there's 40 kmh. And 45 on the nose. So I believe this is the... Um, well, it's not dynamic braking, but uh, kind of the same deal. Let's see if we can actually get this thing working here a little bit. We do have to acknowledge this sign, I believe. Slow down to 85. We're already doing 45, so two steps ahead. Dynamic brake one. Two. Three, four. Let's do full, seven. It is slowing down, so it's not very heavy. It'll be interesting to test that out on a very heavy freight train for sure. So I've shut that back off. And we're leveling back out. Do have a thousand hertz magnet. Let's get throttled back up. open that little side window the animation is super slow it does change the sound as well which is interesting man this sucker's loud there we go we might have a train coming at us um oh wait no we're stopping here oh geez i didn't realize it was this close all right minimum break Break two, break three, five. Yeah, very poor braking. Not that this has got poor braking, I was just talking about me and my, my lack of skills. So we're gonna set that uh, to unlock right. We're gonna click this to open. 
and it should open the doors. Let's load these folks up. We'll get on the road. All right, the train has arrived. We have got a green on the board. Here we go. Release the brakes. Watch the needle. Get it to about 4.7 bar. A couple of notches. Get the juices flowing. Still got to keep it below 40. Currently still under 500 hertz. I don't know if I can clear that or not. It's saying I cannot. Or it's saying I can't not. It's saying I... I don't know. It's, it seems pretty chill right now. Stay below 28. Oh, no. We just broke it. Yeah, so we went too fast. Alright, so it looks like PCB works. <laughs> so that's nice. Alright, I did not keep it under 24. That is my fault. Dingus moment. Charge the brakes up once again. 4.7 bar. Needle is climbing. There we go. We are slowly rolling. There we go. All right, let's juice her up a little bit. We, of course, have to get past the magnet. Once we do, I think I will shut PCB off just to give her a slap on the old cheeks and see if this thing can run. Let's check the wipers out. I like hearing the uh, the actual air valve. That's pretty neat. Go ahead and release PCB. Yeah, it's nice hearing the air. Close that. I do like the uh, the grindage as well, the flange on this thing, the crunchiness. All right, let's go. Wide open, baby. 120 kmh hear that gear shift in just a minute there we go now it sounds like we're in a Huey a Bell helicopter that whomping oh what a Chad sounds pretty damn spicy I you know as usual with a lot of stuff in trains the world and the unreal engine alone I guess I feel like it could have a bit of depth to it could be a bit deeper um, that sounds pretty damn good let's crack all the windows open power we are bouncing it's kind of doing that up and down bibbity bobbin stop. I wasn't even paying attention. I was having fun. Can't do that in a supposed simulator. It's a good thing there's no uh, signal there. Sorry, folks, but we will test the brakes out. No, no, we just failed. Objective failure. Yes, such is my life. I know. Thank you. So there's brake rubbing, and it sounded really good. I don't know if I called it recording a moment ago. Let's see if we can hear it now. Might be better with windows closed. Full service. sounds good so it feels okay for passengers it's not over the top it still takes a moment to break but what I'm interested in is freight so let's go check out some freight 
And last but not certainly least, we are on Meindelbahn in Miltenberg. This train will be headed to Aschaffenburg, which we're going to run here in just a moment. This is your third and possibly final option. I think there's empty depot moves and things of that nature, but this is a, a funky sandwich push-pull service. So you've got a couple of Dostos coaches, and then you got one on the back as well. So we are gonna run this. We're gonna get a feel for this thing. Uh, take a look overall. It's just an awesome looking locomotive. I mean, it's diesel, it's not electric for starters. Diesel hydraulic, of course. Uh, one of the neat things about these locomotives is the unique V-shaped exhaust. Now, those are there for a reason. The early variants did not have those. So a majority of your train lines in Europe and Germany as a whole are electrified. So you've got overhead uh, electrical equipment or line equipment, which is above, and they built or they put these kind of V-shaped chutes on the exhaust ports to kind of shoot, you know, the carbon and soot and exhaust away from the overhead lines that would typically run down the center top of the train because in certain types of weather and whatnot, they would build up on the line and they would cause issues. So they kind of built these to direct it away from the line, which would be primarily overhead in the very middle of the locomotive and the train itself. Uh, and to kind of blow it away from, you know, passengers on a platform or maybe riding with their the windows open or whatnot in, in the coaches, which I don't know if they can even do now, but maybe back then. So that's one of the neat things about it. Uh, it is a really good looking model. I feel like the 218, the Train Sim Classic, which this thing was kind of built upon and from, uh, looked very nice as well for its age anyway. The only thing that kind of throws me off is the plow. I'm not used to seeing these with the plow, so it looks uh, very archaic and medieval and, and funky. Um, I don't know, something just looks a bit off about it. Maybe because it's got a plow in general. What is this woman doing? Oh boy, anyway, it looks good. The color looks good. I love the weathering and the streaking all along the body itself. Nice crisp DB logo. The numbering looks uh, appropriate as well. You've got weathering, soot, grime, rust all over the place. You've got all these air cocks or uh, air handles. Got the hook and screw coupler or whatever the heck it's called. Overall, looks looks pretty nice. Only thing I'm not crazy about is the, the metal bit here on the front to house the lights. That doesn't look very good at all. Uh, it just looks extremely low res. And, and the color is just made to seem really, really dark. I don't know, like it, it kind of stands out with the rest of the locomotive. I do like this corroded bit right here uh, in the white stripe there. That looks very nice. The paint kind of bubbling up and away from the locomotive itself. This thing is a beast. A beast. And I can't wait to hear it run. Idling, it sounds pretty darn good if I'm honest when I saw the um, the preview uh, bits and bobs for this before they released it it didn't sound that good maybe it was the sound quality low bit rate I don't know but it sounded very shrill like it didn't quite match the real counterpart uh, but once I'm in listening to this in the flesh it do not be like that it does sound totally different I don't know if maybe if they changed something between those little teasers and now um, but anywho, the roof equally looks good. You've got streaking and weathering all over, animated fan. These vents right here do open and close automatically. You can see a bit of the engine room. Sadly, you cannot walk in there. The trucks, the under chassis looks okay. Um, they look like they're a bit less refined and textured for some reason compared to the rest of the body of the train, uh, which is a bit funky. Maybe the lighting, if I am honest, you've got applicable stickers and decals everywhere. And I've heard that the uh, suspension physics that Dovetail promised when Trains in World 4 came out is that it wasn't quite ready, but it's coming. Apply to this. So let's get in this thing and have a drive. Now, sadly, I learned 
how to do a, a cold start, but I can't really find a way to be able to replicate it. So it's neat being able to do a cold start in this thing, but there's just no in-game application of doing it besides the little training area. So it's kind of ridiculous. We'll hop back up. One of the neat things, you push the seat forward there to get it out of the way. Push your door out onto the platform. You can't just jump out. You got to hit E to kind of get down. Now e to get back up. Here's the engine room door, which you cannot go into, sadly. Something to do here with uh, the reservoir, I guess, the compressors, some air tanks and pipes. Uh, nothing back here, as far as I can tell. Interior looks pretty good as well. It's not overly uh, crummy. You know, the lighting looks okay. Um, yeah, it looks, it looks pretty on par for some TSG stuff, if I'm honest. There's your handbrake. Let's check the sound. So some of the sound is good, but it does a notable looping, which kind of sucks and sounds a little cheap, if I'm honest. Got a couple of switches back here. Uh, let's see, that is our MU selector. It's currently set to ZWS. Here's our wheel slip protection that is on. Here's the gear selection fast. So the gear thing that I was talking about earlier, so a freight train you're probably gonna to wanna to set to low. Gear selection fast is right now. So it's a passenger train, it's fairly light. Um, I mean, this locomotive probably weighs more than all the cars put together back there. Uh, so that is currently set to fast, but you can change it, which is nice. I don't believe that opens. I don't believe any of these switches work either. All right, guys, we're on Risa Dresden. We're going to check this thing out and see what freight feels like. Alas, we only do have a singular engine, but maybe that'll mean it'll have to work a little bit harder. So let's see if it's set up. Let's turn the uh, PCB on. We will get our reverser in. There's a CIFA light that lit up. Let's get the brake key on. As I mentioned earlier, these uh, fans on the side, or the vents for the fans are animated. Currently, you can see that they're closed. All right, we got that set, that set. Set that forward, transmission power on. Gotta hold that for a second or two. AC compressor's on, train lights on. Let's do this. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, set our markers. Instrument lights, even though you can't see anything. Those are on. Train heating. There we go. So that's on. Alright, the vents should open. Maybe it takes a second here. All right, let's see what kind of uh, gearing we got here. So we're in a freight train now. So let's go ahead and set this to slow. Uh, I think we're good, guys. Let's uh, charge those brakes. Set them to release. There they go, they just opened. Very cool. Top and bottom. That's neat. And it did take a second to get moving there. So let's go ahead and give her another notch. Brake gauge looks good, so we're good there. We gotta roll past the platform here, and then we'll be wide open. Currently have a 40. Notch four. We'll go up here and do a little run by. Oh, 
Oh yeah, she's sounding good. The sound did kind of sneak up on the viewpoint very quickly. It wasn't like a gradual um, incline. All right, we've now got an 80 kmh. Let's get this thing running. Get across the river and it's wide open. One of my favorite routes, probably one of the best German routes or routes overall for Train Sim World right here. Arisa Dresden would highly recommend this. If you're thinking about maybe getting into German stuff um, or anything similar, this route is uh, Chad status for sure. For another notch. So freight definitely feels heavier. Uh, what do we got here? 533 tons. Eh, it's kind of weak sauce, but... The stuff does feel heavier. It, it does take a moment to get moving. But it still feels very capable as well. something else very neat which I spied a moment ago is the exhaust this is one of the few units in Trainsome World that does exhaust somewhat realistic alright here we go see if we can get it alright we're already going pretty high speed let me throttle back here See how it kind of dissipated there? Thinned out a lot. All right, let's start notching up here. Stupid camera. God dang it. It actually changes. So the exhaust note, or the effect anyway, rather, actually changes. It'll also get really, really dark as well, which typically happens with turbocharged or force-inducted uh, engines or units. Um, I couldn't get it to do it just now, but earlier when I was doing some passenger stuff, uh, you know, you crack the throttle wide open and this thing just dumped exhaust. So we're doing 90 kmh. Let's go ahead and do a brake test with the freight here. There's minimum. Got a little shunter rolling back to uh, Risa. Two. Position three. Position okay. It goes from it goes from three to five. That is interesting. <laughs> okay. All right, we're at four bar. Yeah. So it took a minute. It uh, it wasn't overpowered. Uh, it, you know, it wasn't too grabby to where sometimes you feel like, oh, you grab too much and now it's going to yank the train backwards and you're going to have to equalize and it's going to take ages and that old thing. It's, it's very gradual. Um, you know, you obviously don't have to grab too much unless you're in an emergency type situation. Let's see if we can get that exhaust clagging up here. Claggy McClaggerson. I get a good angle on it here. I don't know, 
man. It's weird. Uh, when I was on Mintelbahn earlier, um, I mean, it started getting sooty as hell. It looked like a damn steam engine. It's insane. I don't know if you have to have it in a specific setting or whatnot. Maybe it's because I have it set to the low speed and not the high speed or something like that. But uh, overall, I think DBBR218 Loco add-on is a pretty decent pack. Coming from TSG, I had high hopes already for that. Uh, you know, historically decent things, obviously. Um, but it's a nice unit. It, it, it's something different than your standard electrical locomotive. Uh, electrical. Electric locomotive. And uh, a couple of shunters and things like that. It looks fantastic. Uh, inside and out, the sounds are pretty good, although I feel like the, the idle sound is always kind of dominant, and uh, I feel like it should be a, a bit lower, and then you'd be able to hear the, the sound build through transitions. Uh, it just seems like that baseline idle is just a bit too high all the time, um, but it, you know, it's it's got quite a quite a bit of functionality. It sucks you can't go in the back and, and mess with the PCB valves and the battery, you know, and all that. You kind of have to do it with your keyboard shortcuts and things like that, which sucks. The biggest takeaway and letdown is is where this thing runs in the game. So it's Hamburg Lubeck. You know, if you want a, a bulk of your services and timetable stuff, you got to have Hamburg Lubeck. And it's just not a great route, in my opinion. Um, it's, you know, it's just one of those older routes now. It's got the crappier time of day, so it doesn't look as good as this. This this route, Risa Dresden did have the old time of day as well, but Dovetail Games went in and kind of fixed it. The lighting is still a bit janky, just looking around overall, but at least the sky looks a bit better. Um, so that just kind of sucks in its own right. Uh, you know, it, it does offer quite a bit. You got freight, different types of passenger services, um, but it's just... You know, as far as usability and how great it is and usability are just two totally different things. It's like oil and water and trying to mix the two, it just doesn't work. It's a great product, it's just the playability is not really there, it would seem. Um, you know, I know getting things to work with, with new add-ons and locomotives and trains and things like that with existing layering and timetabling can be a bit of a bitch uh, in layman's. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. It would be nice if it was on a better route, had a better timetable, if it actually layered in, which I don't think it does. So you will not really see this on the rails like you would other German and British locomotives within Train Sim World. Uh, because it's just not going to appear on anything really other than Mintelbahn or Hamburg Lubeck. Also, the price, 17 bucks. Uh, you know, U.S. dollars, you can't beat that. I feel like Loco Pack singular add-ons for Train Sim World used to be 20 so I don't know how it's uh, equating in, in uh, you know, other currencies. Maybe it's a bit up in some places and a bit down in others. Uh, I wish the total add-on DLC, like for new routes, would follow suit instead of being $40 because that is ridiculous. Um, but it is a bit cheaper, which is nice. I think they kind of did that because it's like, hey, you know, here's a little, here's a little something for having this thing run on a couple of not so great routes that are fun or busy or useful but uh overall nice nice locomotive tsg dbbr class 218 i would highly recommend this thing i love the german stuff it's pretty much the only reason i play train sim world anymore if i do uh but this thing's nice it's you know i'd almost consider it like a pro type stuff for train sim world even though there's really nothing pro with train sim world like the train sim classic days but I would kind of elbow this, nudge this towards that pro arena versus like some of the other stuff. Uh, it would have been nice to see a manual or something like that as well. Take the time, make a PDF. It ain't that damn hard. Other than that, yeah, thumbs up. Nice product. I will enjoy it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. That's all for now. See you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.